Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the most important uh, machine learning algorithms used uh, in industries. Please subscribe to the channel to get notifications whenever we upload a new video. Thank you. What is machine learning? This is one field of computer science in which computers uh, have the ability to learn something to do without being explicitly programmed and that's very important to understand here. Without having the rules explicitly given to the computers, the computer is able to perform certain amount of tasks and that uh, is covered in the field of computer science known as machine learning. It's very popular nowadays. Why? Because we're living in a world of uh, digital, uh, or rather we say the world is, has become a digital world. And in the digital world, uh, we have got a uh, paramount of data and that's being leveraged by companies like Amazon, Google, Netflix and you, you name any company, uh, Uber, they use data that customers uh, you know, uh, create and they use the data to uh, learn the pattern in the data and use it for their business. Amazon use the customer data to provide recommendations, product recommendations to customers who will uh, you know use the product recommendations to purchase something google uses for uses it for variety of things it uses for youtube recommendations it uses for search engine optimizations search engine uh, results it also uses for you know a number of things uh, including the self driving car you might have heard about it netflix uses it for you know recommending you uh, a movie based on uh, you know your historical experience of watching on YouTube uh, on, on Netflix a, a customers experience on Netflix from uh, you know from a variety of data it has collected so machine learning can be uh, of two types uh, uh, machine learning algorithms can broadly be categorized into supervised machine learning algorithms and unsupervised machine learning algorithms so what is supervised machine learning algorithms so let's try to understand like this now the algorithms is going to be given to two data sets two data points and it is going to learn the pattern so here is one data point a yellow banana and a green banana and the algorithm you know studies you know the behavior of this two data point and it finds out some sort of a rule how to um, you know how to understand whether a picture is a banana or not okay now given the data point it has been shown it tries to find a pattern in the data and given a new data it tries to categorize into certain cat uh, you know certain type now this is the data it has been given the algorithm has been given to learn and this is a completely new data that we have given the algorithm to categorize. Now, the alg algorithm is need to uh, is got to tell us what exactly is uh, this picture, and it should ideally tell us that this is a red banana. So, in supervised learning algorithms, you first train the algorithm with a given set of data points, and we have. Uh, data point which has been labeled that means we know for sure what exactly is the data point this is a banana this is also a banana so we we can label the data point in supervised machine learning algorithms whereas in unsupervised le machine learning algorithms we have the data in place through which the uh, algorithm can train itself but it's unlabeled for instance in this picture we know that we have got the data but we do not quite sure what exactly is this data. We do not quite sure what is this, what is this. But the algorithm is not going to tell us this is strawberry, this is um, grapes. It's only going to tell us that yes, this is of one category and this is of another category. And that category, that you know, type of algorithm is known as a unsupervised machine learning algorithm. The two main problems that you would come across in machine learning. One is the regression problem. The other one is the classification problem. 
So regression problem is in which um, you would be given something to predict. Okay, predicting house prices, predicting demand. You know, predicting um, either, you know it could be the inf inflation rate, stock price. Okay, so when you have something to predict, um, and you know you have something to predict given a uh, certain amount of information about that particular uh, type, we call that as a regression problem. Okay, so for instance, here we have. Uh, we are trying to predict the house price given the uh, size of the house and that uh, is known as a regression problem. So we have got house price which is a function of the size of the house. And remember in regression problem the, uh, the quantity that you are trying to predict should be should be uh, continuous in nature okay so what is continuous that means the house price can be of uh, any value it can take any value okay and there are two different types of regression problem you normally come under one is a linear regression problem and other one is non-linear one or in other in other words we can also say that there's something not linear. I mean, non-linear is of course a bit confusing term because it's technically it has a different meaning. But yeah, we can say that this is not linear. And this is linear. Because the line that you can fit into this curve, it it's, it's a straight line. You know, this is house price and this is let's say, uh, you know, it could be um it could be the, let's say the area area of the house okay and this is a linear uh, regression problem because the line that you're fitting the data is a straight line whereas here it's not a linear case you cannot fit a linear line here you have to fit some sort of a curve because it's not you know properly linear so to say so this is is a not linear uh, regression problem. Then comes what is classification problem. In classification problems, you come across cases where you have to classify things into different types. And it could be binary, that means the classification could be between two types. So we have got one classification of circles and we have a classification for uh, you know crosses. So that's binary classification because we have got only two types of points whereas it could well be a multi classification as well so you can have multiple classes to be classified we've got triangles we have got squares we've got crosses and that's a multi classification problem similarly to uh, similar to what we learned in regressions uh, classification problems can also be of linear and not linear type so this is a linear classification and it's a not linear classification okay and if you can classify uh, something completely uh, with, a, uh, with a straight line that's a linear classification whereas you know if it is not a straight line classification it, it is considered as as a long not linear classification some of the most important algorithms used in the modern world uh, are as follows this is not exhaustive uh, you know many more I would say but these are some of the popular ones and uh, these are uh, very uh, important algorithms used in the industry and academic research. One is decision tree, the linear regression, logistic regression, the Nybish classification, k-means clustering, support vector machine, a priori algorithm, k-nearest neighbor algorithm, random forest algorithm, principal component analysis algorithms, and you know there are many more but these are you know, some of the most popular ones so let's try to understand at a very high level I'm not going to into the depth of each of these algorithms I'll just give you a brief idea what these algorithms are what are the advantages how do we use 
and where we use these algorithms. First, we'll see what is a decision tree. A decision tree is a graphical representation of various decisions and their possible consequences, including chances like events, resource cost, and utility. So this looks a pretty graph. This looks uh, like a graph or a certain type of decision uh, uh, with different trees attached to it. Okay, and we'll see uh, a sample or an example of it to understand it better. So in the tree, we'll have three nodes. One is internal nodes, then we'll have branches, and then we'll have leaf nodes, each having their own significance. And that these are three parts of uh, you know decision tree. Uh, an internal load uh, represents the test on the attribute, branch represents the outcome of the test, and the leaf node represents a particular class, that is decision made after computing all the attributes. Types of decision trees. As you have seen, ML algorithms, machine learning algorithms can be of two types, classification and regression. So decision tree are also of two types, classification and regression. So Decision tree can well be used for a regression problem as well as for a classification problem. So here is an example of a decision tree. You know, you have a question in mind whether a bank or a company has to open a new branch in a particular town. So it's got two decisions to make, yes or no. And the yes and no is going to come based on different uh, attributes or different uh, scenarios different situation data that it has with with the, with it so it could have is is a new location suitable uh, uh the second question would be you know whether one should go in for expanding the same branch instead of you know uh, opening a new one then Another attribute could be availability of cheap labor, no cheap labor available, uh, and so on. So you do that with yes and no, and then you you know you come from uh, the last attributes. And if you have, let's say, for instance, you have got cheap labor in place, then it's 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 in, then it's very useful or rather profitable to uh, start a new branch, and that's how you arrive at this decision whereas if you do not have access to cheap labor you actually arrive at this decision that means you better not uh, open a new branch well this can be automated with the decision tree algorithm which provides different weights to different attributes and come up with a decision and that can well be used for regression and classification problems the advantages of decision trees are the follows. It's a visual representation, so it's very easy to understand and it can be well be explained to even a non-technical audience. It can be both categorical and numeric, numeric data, so it can well be used for a categorical data uh, for classification, for numerical data for um, uh, a continuous numerical data for uh, regression. It performs well when large data set is used. Um, so it can take care of both linear and non-linear association. That's an important thing. The drawback could be uh, it's not a very efficient technique. It's easy to use, easy to understand, easy to explain to people who are not technically skilled in machine learning. But it's it's not as efficient as many other machine learning algorithms. So it's not very accurate. It can sometimes give instability uh, or data which is um, you know, full of uh, issues, data which has got outliers in place. The next algorithm is linear regression. Linear regression is concerned with study of dependence of one variable on one or more variables. And this is a regression problem, you know. It's not a classification problem. So, and the form takes like this. You know, quantity of demand depends on price and income of it's a customers and you want to predict what is the quantity of demand which will be expected given the price of the product given the income of the customers so that's typical linear regression problem where quantity is is a continuous continuous and numerical 
numerical variable in place. Whereas there is no such conditions on the right hand side of the variables. It can be categorical, it can be continuous, you know, anything. It's not an issue. All right, just to understand what exactly this equation means, just try to understand what betas and alphas are. Well, beta 1, beta 2 represents the regression coefficients, including alpha. So, alpha is known as the uh, intercept, whereas beta, betas are known as the slope, slope coefficients. Okay. And this is a model which assumes linear relationships. So remember, this cannot model a not linear relationship that we have seen. And price and income, are we call that as depend, uh, sorry, independent variable. Okay, independent variable. Or you can also call that as factors. Sorry, features. You know, statistics people call it as linear independent variables. In machine learning, normally people uh, call it as features. Um, quantity is known as a target variable or dependent variable. Quantity is the dependent variable. I will also call it as target variable. When you have got only one independent variable or one feature in the right hand side of the equation, we call that as a simple linear regression. If there are more than one, uh, uh, you know, independent variable, then we call that as a multiple linear regression equation. The next algorithm is known as the logistic regression. This is also known as a logit model or a logit regression. This is a classification, typical classification problem where you have, you know, categories to be classified. Okay. So, in logistic regression, the dependent variable or the target variable is categorical in nature. It models the probability of some class happening. You know, probability that a customer is a good customer, probability that somebody has cancer, probability that um, a bank is going to go bankrupt. So, it, it is used to model for the probability of certain events happening. And it uses uh, an algorithm to estimate the coefficients known as the maximum likelihood as, uh, and there are of course many other uh, optimization, routine optimization algorithms that can be used to find out the estimates of logistic regression, but MLE or maximum likelihood estimation is one popular one. Logistic regression can be of many times the popular one are multiple multinomial logit where you know you have the dependent variable can take you know more than two cases two categories and it need not be ordered in nature whereas ordinal logic will be a kind of model where the categories that is there with multi dependent variable target variable can well be uh, you know ordered um, for instance a student completes primary education, then secondary education, and then graduation. So you can actually order, right? Primary, secondary, college, university. You know, it comes with an order. Okay. So that's order logic regression. Theoretically, a logistic regression looks something like this. Okay. So this is this is. Uh, is a function which is a function of the different attributes of a variable. Okay, and x could be many x, x1, x2, x3. Okay, and we normally model this as a probability of an event. Probability of a customer is a good customer. Probability uh, that is somebody is good. Then X could text things like income, like you know, payment, and so on. 
when you plot the probability with respect to the uh, factors and independent variable it is all it's going to see something like this this particular curve okay it's not going to do the details of it but this is how it looks then the next one is the naive Bayesian classification so this is one type of classification that uses the Bayes theorem so Bayes theorem is a popular theorem in statistics which is uh, used to find the posterior probability of something if you know the prior probability. Not get into the details of it if you are uh, you know, interested in learning naive Bayesian classification into, in, in a great detail then please study the Bayes theorem very well before getting into the details of naive Bayesian. The application of naive Bayesian uh, classification algorithms are in many industry primarily in the in the uh, digital industry it's used for web page classification uh, email classification for spam or good email classification it's used heavily used in text text uh, analytics or text mining so spam filter is is the most popular use of Bayesian classification. It's also used for sentiment analysis. You know, sentiment analysis is used nowadays for many reasons for election forecast, for stock market predictions, and, and so on. Google uses it for document categorization. That's important. The advantage of Bayesian is that it performs well when input variables are categorical. It generally requires little training data and you not have a large training data to train the model. And it is completely independent of assumptions. It has good performance in various applications domain. And it's also easy to implement. Some of the drawbacks are it assumes class conditional independence, which is you know very difficult to find. So you will understand what a class conditional independence when you study uh, the Bayesian algorithm. Dependencies exist among such variables, you know, then that is something which uh, sometimes brings, um, you know, problems. For instance, you know, if you have attributes like hospitals, patients, profile, age, family history, they're all somewhat, uh, there is dependency and that could uh, have a pattern in various other things. So dependency cannot be modeled. So that's the main drawback of navigation. K-means clustering. This is unsupervised learning algorithm, by the way. K-means clustering aims uh, to partition n observation into k cluster. Okay, so if you have something like this and it's, it's not something that is supervised one it's an unsupervised you just have got three classes right and k-means is a very useful algorithm which can you know classify data into different classes so for instance let's consider k-means clustering for wikipedia search results the search term java on wikipedia will return all pages containing the word uh, Jaguar which can refer to Java as the island in Indonesia. Java as the programming language and Java as the coffee game. Uh, K-means algorithm can be applied to group the web page that talks about similar concepts. So algorithms will group all web pages that talk about Java as the island into one cluster and Java as the language into another cluster. So a same data, same word Java can actually you know filter data points related to the java language the programming language java and also uh, the place okay and how do you you know cluster it into different types well the way it clusters is to find out the content inside each one of these web pages and if it is a pro if it is a similar web pages uh, with programming then it, it could well be one type and if it is not related to programming then it's another type and that's how it, it you know classifies the web pages into different categories.
the applications are used by primarily for you know search results by you wahoo yahoo google you know microsoft it also is useful for segment customers into different types that's important it's advantage this helps to reduce computational time for users uh, it helps to produce tighter clusters very accurate results and interpreting results is very easy uh, in k-means clustering it has also disadvantages it it is only applicable when the mean is defined and sometimes the mean is not defined for categorical data set you do not have a mean so to say and that's a problem it is not efficient to handle noisy data if the data is very noisy with outliers and algorithm doesn't do well and the algorithm fails in nonlinear data sets data set where the data cannot be classified linearly okay it does a bad job there the next algorithm we'll talk about is the support vector machine learning it is a supervised learning machine learning algorithm and i'm sure you are aware of what a supervised machine learning algorithm is it classifies the data into different classes by finding a line or hyperplane so it uses something called as hyperplane instead of a line it uses some sort of a hyperplane to separate training data into different classes and it uses multiple hyperplane to do so it tries to maximize the distance between the various classes that are involved and is known as margin maximization okay if you're learning the theory of svm you will understand in better what a margin maximization is i mean the idea is to maximize the separation between different categories and that's what it essentially means if the line that maximizes the distance is identified the probability to generalize well the unseen data increases it's a non probability uh, probabilistic binary classifier and there are two types of svm linear svms and non linear svms a linear svm training data is separated by a hyperplane whereas in non linear data separation is done by uh, hyperplane separate separation is done by multiple hyperplane it's not just by um, it's not just a single hyperplane that that does the classification it has got several advantages several merits it is widely used in uh, case of stock market forecasting uh, apart from the uh, time series arima forecasting uh, it's use uh, i'm sorry since it's, it's it's a it's a classification it's it's not used for so to say price forecasting but rather comparing the performance of two stocks so you know it's more of classification not of regression type so it's not used for price forecasting in stock market rather it's used for uh, you know comparing the performance of two stocks of the same sector uh, there is no overfitting of data it's it's very not it's not very prone to overfitting it's very efficient and uh, you know it classifies the future data very efficiently um, it is very useful in uh, classifying images so that's you know very useful for companies like google who classifies images and facebook and so on and then the a priori algorithms very uh, classical algorithms in machine learning it is one of the unsupervised machine learning algorithm it generates association rule from a given data and what a association rule is so it association rules is something like this if an event a occurs then event b also occurs so we'll associate certain probability associated with if a event a occurs what's the probability of b happening and you know you associate event a and b in certain way and you find a pattern and that's known as association and then you know the idea of associating two events and you do that with if then format uh, for an example if a person buys a car he will most probably will install a music system too all right and that's buying a car and buying in or installing a music system are two uh, associated events um, so the algorithm derives conclusion by observing the number of people who bought a car and then install a music system this way the ratio is derived like 100 people bought a car then 85 of them installed a music system interesting insight right 
100 people bought the car, 85 of them installed music system. So that's there's some sort of a probability associated that 85% of the people who bought the car actually went on to install a music system and that information can be used for something. Of course, it's the theory is locked for detail. It's not as simple as what we learned previous slide. A priori is used by websites like Amazon and you know Flipkart, uh, name any uh, modern e-commerce companies or the brick and mortar company like Walmart also uses a priori algorithms to find out associations, association rule and finding on pattern in the uh, purchases made by the customers. Its advantages are it's easy to implement. It makes uses of large item set of properties. So, you know, it's, it, 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 it is very uh, useful when you have um, you know, a very uh, large set of attributes. But its main disadvantage is that it's very slow. It could be very, very slow. Then we have got K nearest neighbor algorithm. It's a non-parametric method used for classification and regression. So what is a non-parametric method? So we learned a regression equation like this. If you remember, this is parametric regression because we have got an estimate called beta. So given x, you'll always be able to find y. So that is not a case of a non-parametric case. That means we do not have, you know, sort an estimate called beta or alpha in non-parametric cases. Um, so it's used for pattern recognition. Uh, so an example could be there is a spread of blue circles and red triangles. We need to find the class of green stars. The green star can either belong to the class of blue circles and red triangles and, not, and nothing else. The K in the K nearest algorithm is the nearest neighbor we used to take a vote from and it could take any number so just you know K could be any numbers just take you know the most happening things for a particular observation and draw a conclusion out of that that's what the K nearest neighbor means. Okay, so this is an example. So the example is that if there is a spread of blue circles and red triangles, we need to need to find the class of a green star. If the green star can either belong to the class of blue circles and red triangles and nothing else. Now K in the K N algorithm is the nearest neighbors we used to take a vote from. And let's in, consider K equal to 3. Hence so we make a circle with the green stars as the center and take only 3 data points. So k in this case is 3. So we are going to take the k nearest things or uh, nearest data points for uh, the blue star, sorry, the green star. Okay. So in the next slide, we have this one. So here is the blue star. And we are just taking the next three data points uh, closer to it. Okay. So the first the three data points are this one. The next three data points are this one. And it's clearly... As you can see, the three data points closest to the green star are the red triangles. Hence, we can say that the green star belongs to the class of red triangles. You know, it's, it's, the idea here is that, is that you take a certain amount of data where K actually tell you what is the exact number of data points you need to take and see what is the maximum number of categories, you know, it has, uh, it is similar to. You know, remember a case where one of the circles is also there. Now, we have got four data points, k equal to four, right? But there are three triangles, only one circle. So the star belongs to the you know, group of triangles, not the circle, because the number of triangles are more. So that's easy to implement. But it's, um, and and the best advantage of, uh, the most uh, noteworthy advantage of uh, k nearest me means is that its calculation time is, uh, performance is very good. Calculation time is very less. But it could be inefficient sometimes. It may not be able to give a quick result, a good result, if um, you're using it. And K, you know, selecting K is also very ambiguous. It's not very clear how many Ks, what should be the exact uh, number for K. All right. And it's also prone to outlier. That's the problem. Random forest is the next algorithm. 
it's an ensemble learning method used for classification and regression. Important to remember that's used for both. It includes bagging approach to create a bunch of decision trees. If you have studied about decision trees, it uses multiple decision trees and it uses a subset of the data every time and it you know builds hundred thousands, millions, you know, multi-millions decision trees depending on how many trees you want. And it combines the results from different decision tree to come up with uh, the final results. The output of all decision trees in the random forest is combined to make final decision. And that's important. So naturally it would be, you know, uh, more efficient compared to a single decision tree because you have just multiple ones. So it's used in many industries. It's used in, in a banking industry to find out high risk loans, who is going to be a good uh, default customers it's used for you know in healthcare industry to find out who could potentially have cancer uh, it is used in automobile industry to find out whether an automobile is going to have a failure in future healthcare you know everywhere even in uh, recommendation engines by Amazon and uh, Netflix they use this algorithm this has got several advantages. This is very efficient and it keeps better accuracy. It's less time consuming. Uh, it's robust to noise or robust to outliers. So that's important and high classification accuracy. And it's very suitable for a uh, big data application. Uh, it, when you have very large data and which requires you to have an efficient algorithm which gives reasonably good predictive uh, uh, which has reasonably good predictive power random failures is one that you can use it has got disadvantages as well large number of decision trees slows down and sometimes it's difficult to handle such algorithm with heavy number of decision trees if data consists of categorical variables with different number of levels then the algorithm gets biased in favor of the variable with higher number of levels you know that's another technically a disadvantage uh, yeah and also difficult to analyze is theoretically so it cannot explain easily to a non-technical audience it is complicated the next one is a principal component analysis a principal component regression analysis is is primarily used to convert correlated variables to a set of uncorrelated variables known as principal component and these principal component are then used for regression so it's primarily a dimension reduction algorithms so normally people use PCA or principal component to reduce the number of uh, reduce the number of features or the number of independent variables and then with a small number of independent variables you can you know use a linear regression you can use a decision tree you can use any of these uh, you know classification or a regression algorithm so PCA or principal component analysis is very useful uh, in reducing the number of variables sometimes you have so many of them and you can't use all of them so it's used for in, it's used in combination with other algorithms it's not used standalone as a classification or regression algorithm but it's used along with other algorithms that we have seen so far several advantages of it it reduces the high dimension i've already said uh, and it's orthogonal transformation so there is hardly any correlation between your uh, independent variable and that's a good thing but it has got assumptions which are not valid so it has got disadvantages but then you know the advantages are so good that you actually don't care what the disadvantages are so please subscribe to us please share channel or uh, on this video with your friends in a social media page and please subscribe to us if you want to learn data mining machine learning data science big data techniques so thank you so much